Okay, so for this lesson, we're going to be talking about the respiratory system. And you can see the list behind me here. The good news about the respiratory system is there's no dissections, there's nothing you need to know except for human models. So that makes it a little bit easier. This is a pretty easy lesson as far as some of the other things that we've done. So um, I'm gonna go through this list, just uh, basically using a couple pictures and then um, uh, you'll have it to study. So let's get to a um, picture here and we'll get started. So basically the, the bulk of this list is going to be using uh, sagittal section of our head. And so uh, this is all respiratory structures that are in our head and face. So to get started with, um, if you look at our list, we're going to break our face down into pieces. So uh, if you look at this, our face is broken into two big cavities. The first cavity is behind our nose and it's the nasal cavity. So we'll go ahead and type that in, nasal cavity. So it's the space behind your nose. This whole space right in here is our nasal cavity. Then uh, our mouth is the oral cavity. So I'll go ahead and label oral cavity. So you've got a big space behind your mouth or that makes up your mouth and then a big space behind your nose. So uh, the oral cavity, if you look at a diagram like this and a lot of the test questions will have pictures like this, the tongue seems to fill it, most of it up but tongue is not on our list because it's not a respiratory organ, it's a digestive organ. So we won't be worrying about um, the tongue even though it makes up a big area of that oral cavity. Now we also have our nostrils. The nostrils um, are technically called nares. So we're going to label them as nares. If you were, well, if you were to write nostrils, I, I probably wouldn't mark that wrong, but try and think of them as nares. Now, between the nasal cavity and the oral cavity, we have a divider. This divider is uh, our maxilla and the um, palatine bones. This is known as our hard palate. So the hard palate divides, it's the bone that divides the nasal cavity from our uh, oral cavity. Now there's some fleshy tissue that sits on the hard palate. So the, the tissue that sits on this hard palate is called the soft palate. So the soft palate's this fleshy tissue that makes up the roof of your mouth. So that's the soft palate. Now on the back of your soft palate hanging down is this dangly do. And this little dangly do dude is called the uvula. It's the thing that, that is hanging down in the back of your throat. On a diagram like this, it's right here. So this is your uvula and the uvula aids us in speech, but it also helps when we swallow food to keep food going the correct direction. 
Okay, so we have our nasal cavity, we have our oral cavity, we have the divider called the hard palate that has the soft palate tissue attached to it. The back of the soft palate is this little dangly do hanging down called the uvula. And then we have our nares. The nares are your nostrils. All right, so that's already um, covered a bunch of the list. Um, what I'm going to do is let's get rid of a couple labels just for t uh, space. I'm going to get rid of the uvula. And this back of our nose and throat. So the back of our nose and throat has a specific name. So this whole area right in here makes up the back of our nose, the back of our throat. The whole thing is called the pharynx. So the entire back of your throat is known as the pharynx. Now the back of your nose is known as the nasopharynx. So the pharynx is split into a couple pieces. So we have the nasopharynx that's behind your nose and then we have the oropharynx that is behind your mouth. Okay. And then down, uh, kind of at the top of your throat, this area, I didn't really draw it. Let me kind of circle it. But this, well, this area right in here is the third part of the pharynx called the laryngeopharynx. So there are three parts of this pharynx. The nasopharynx is behind the nose. The oropharynx is behind the uh, mouth. Let's see if I can spell this right. <laughs> Laryngeopharynx. Okay. Oops. Forgive me. Okay, there we go. Laryngeopharynx. Okay. So <laughs> uh, it's the bottom part, kind of the top of your throat. So you have the, the three parts of your pharynx. And on the exam, they will ask you to differentiate these. So make sure that you're learning them separately so that we have the naso, oro, and laryngeopharynx. That makes up this back part. So, you know, the back of your mouth where you would... Um, uh, you know, if you open your mouth and you look at the back of your throat, that's your oropharynx. You can't really see your nasopharynx because it's behind your nose and it's above the, the uvula. Um, but uh, like if a doctor takes a tongue depressor and, and uh, oh, you open your mouth and the doctor presses down on your tongue, he can see down into your laryngeopharynx as well. So uh, let's be familiar with those structures all right and then each whoops each one of these has uh, some structures that we need to know so let's look at the nasopharynx first all right so I cleared my screen let's go to the nasopharynx and let's talk about a couple things that we need to know that are in this nasopharynx. First of all, there is, and on this diagram, pretty much all diagrams, it's difficult to find, but there is, if you look right on the, on the back of the nasopharynx, there is going to be a lump of tissue right here where I'm marking it. That lump of tissue is one of your tonsils. Uh, you can call it the adenoids, or you can call them the pharyngeal tonsils. So if you look on your list, it says pharyngeal tonsils, but if you want to write adenoids, you can as well. 
Um, so the pharyngeal tonsils, whoops, pharyngeal tonsils, whoops, or I don't mind if you call them adenoids. Can't type this morning, I apologize. Okay. So you can call them the pharyngeal tonsils or the adenoids. That is this structure right here that I just circled. So they are a pair or a, a set of your tonsils. Now, those are in the nasopharynx. Another structure that's in the nasopharynx is the opening to your eustachian tube. The eustachian or auditory tube is a tube that goes from your ear to your throat. It connects your ear and your throat. This dark area, you see this kind of, this, this right here, and it looks like this on all of your diagrams. That is actually the opening of a tube called the eustachian tube or you can call it the auditory tube. On your list, it's called the auditory tube. So I guess we'll, we'll stick with that name. But it's often called the eustachian tube as well. So this is the auditory tube. And then uh, in parentheses here, I'll put eustachian so you know how to spell it. Eustachian tube. And so this is a tube that connects your ear to your throat. Okay, let's see here. So those are the two structures that you need to know in the nasopharynx. So the nasopharynx is the back of your nose this area right here, and it's got two structures that you have to know. Okay, that's not too bad. Let's look at the oropharynx. The oropharynx is this area on the back of your mouth, and it really only has two structures that you need to be able to recognize, and they're your other uh, two tonsils. So if we look closely, we're gonna see a lump on the side of your throat. It's right here. That lump is your first tonsil, uh, and really the only tonsil that you can see. It's called the palatine tonsils. So they're the ones on the side of your throat. So when you open your mouth and you look at your tonsils, they are the palatine tonsils. So your palatine tonsils are the ones that you can see. And they're on the side of your throat. So they're that lump right there. They're that lump that I just circled. So if I got rid, well, I can't do that. But if I got rid of my um, circle, you would see pal the palatine tonsils. Now the next um, tonsils, the third and final tonsil is you see, here's your tongue. On the back of the tongue is this flap. That flap is your other tonsil, and it's called the lingual tonsils. I always remember this because your tongue helps you talk, and linguistics is speech. So your uh, lingual tonsils are on your tongue, and they help you and your tongue helps you talk, and lingual means speech. That's how I always remember that. So we've got these three um, tonsils. We've got your adenoids or pharyngeal tonsils. We have our palatine tonsils that are on the sides of your throat. Those are the ones you see. And then on the back of your tongue, you have your lingual tonsils. Now, this is why the doctor actually takes his tongue depressor and pushes down on your tongue is so he can look at your lingual tonsils and see if they're swollen. Uh, when they're examining you. So that's um, it's kind of kind of the, the purpose of the tongue depressor. Okay, so um, 
at this point, we are halfway through our list. You can see we've done the whole first column of the list. And uh, we're just going to move into the second part of the list. The first part of the second um, column is something we can just keep using this picture for. Um, I'm going to uh, go ahead and delete our labels here. And if you notice the next part of the list, it says larynx. Our larynx is the top of our throat. So right under our oropharynx, we have this area right here that makes up the top of our throat. And that is the larynx. So the entire structure is the larynx. And that larynx is going to um, aid in swallowing and as, as well as um, bringing air in. Um, we have a couple of structures. If you, uh, if you look at this, um, there's a big flap that hangs up right here. So I will outline it. This flap here is the flap that will close and prevent food stuff from going into your airway. So it's called the epiglottis. And it's just a piece of cartilage. Basically your uh, larynx is a bunch of cartilage. Um, so this is the epiglottis. That's our first strip of cartilage that makes up this larynx. So it's kind of marks the top of the larynx. And what happens is it actually doesn't, it doesn't move really itself. When you swallow, your whole larynx moves up and presses up against the epiglottis and that prevents um, food stuff from going into your trachea, into your respiratory system. Okay, so we've got our epiglottis. Another strip of cartilage that you need to know that's part of the larynx is this little thing that kind of looks like lips right there on the side wall. That structure, those are your vocal cords. So our vocal cords or vocal folds. Uh, on your list, they call them vocal folds. Again, it's okay to call them vocal cords, but your vocal folds or vocal cords are also made of cartilage and they're part of that larynx. So they, they're that little flappy dude right there. Okay. So that's the second strip of cartilage. And then if you look, there are two other ones. One's called the uh, thyroid cartilage and one is called the cricoid cartilage. And they're actually kind of hard to see on this uh, diagram, but they are uh, basically your Adam's apple. So the Adam's apple is this cartilage called thyroid cartilage. Thyroid, uh, oops, cartilage. And it makes up the front of the larynx. And I'm going to show you a different picture here so you can see these. But the thyroid cartilage is the is the uh, front. It's your Adam's apple. So when you when you have feel that lump in your throat, that lump in your throat is uh, the thyroid cartilage. Let me go to a different picture here uh, because it's harder to see on that picture I just had for you. So I'm gonna open up a, a different picture and let's look at this thyroid cartilage. All right, so if I, if I open up this picture, um, this really shows us the thyroid cartilage pretty well. See, this is a front view. See, here's this dude, it's a front view of him. This is our thyroid cartilage. It's what we call the Adam's apple. So it has this little divot in the top 
and you can actually feel that on yourself, but it's this whole plate, this entire plate of cartilage that makes up the front of your throat is the thyroid cartilage. Now down below it, you see this little strip of cartilage that's a U. This little U, I'm trying to outline it, it's a little hard to do on the computer, but that little U right there is the other set of cartilage, your thyroid cartilage. So you have your cricoid, I'm sorry, that's the cricoid cartilage. You have your thyroid cartilage on the top that makes up your Adam's apple, and then below it you have your uh, cricoid cartilage. So these make up the, the um, front of your um, larynx. All right, let's see if I have a side view of it. I don't really have a great picture of a side view. I have this guy here, and um, I do need to show you this because a lot of times on the exam they will put it, put these questions on a side view like this. So if you look, you can see my thyroid and cricoid cartilage. So it's just the thyroid cartilage is this just this area right here. Right, that's the thyroid cartilage, and then just this. Oh shush, sorry, my phone's going off. Um, this area right here is the cricoid cartilage. So you need to be able to um, differentiate those two. Okay. Now, we're almost done with this list. What we have to do is we're now going to move down into the lungs, actually, which kind of makes sense for the respiratory system that we would uh, finally get into the lungs. So let's find a nice picture here. And here's my picture that I want to show you. And so the rest of the, the list is just uh, basically the tubes that lead to the lungs and then the lungs are part of the list as well. So uh, I'm not going to go in order here, but if you look at this, this is pretty, um, pretty straightforward. What we just talked about are thyroid cartilage and our cricoid cartilage are right here on that diagram. So this is your thyroid cartilage, and then below it, that little U, is your cricoid cartilage. All right, that makes up the part of the larynx. Now, your tube, the air tube, is the trachea, and it's ribbed. See how it has these um, like little ribs? Those little ribs are reinforcements. It's an air hose. It's like a vacuum hose. Just think of the hose on your vacuum. It's got those, uh, it's, it's reinforced with the wire and that's so that it won't collapse. So what you don't want is your trachea to collapse. And so it's reinforced with this cartilage that allows uh, the tube to be uh, more durable. So these ribs or these uh, reinforcements are going to allow that trachea to stay open. You know, if you didn't have these, if you took a deep breath or if you got really happy or you laughed really hard, you might inhale and just close off your tube. You know, imagine like uh, you go to Sonic and you get a really thick milkshake and they give you a straw and when you suck on the straw, the straw just collapses. Well, if you got a reinforced straw that has these uh, little rings around it, uh, it wouldn't collapse. And that's the, the idea behind the trachea. So our trachea is really easy to identify because it has these rings of cartilage that wrap around it. Now, if you notice the trachea then branches, one's going to go to our right lung. So this is the right lung. Remember, on all these pictures, right and left are switched. So uh, the branches are called bronchi. So you've got your trachea coming down, and then it's going to branch 
and it branches into bronchi. And those bronchi, if you look at your list, it says primary and secondary bronchi. So your primary bronchi are the first branches. And then as it branches second and, and third, those are secondary and tertiary uh, branches. So you only need to worry about the, the primary bron uh, bronchus, which is the first branch, and then these second branches coming down like this. All right, so those are uh, the tubes leading into the lungs. So you have the trachea, then you have the bronchi, where they break into primary bronchi and secondary bronchi. As they get smaller and smaller, these smaller and smaller branches are going to terminate and um, these smallest branches are microscopic and they're called bronchioles. So the bronchioles are the, are the smallest of the branches. And I was going to show you, I've got a picture somewhere that I was going to show you of the terminus there, which is called the alveoli. I'll get to that here in a second. But um, your bronchii are going to just get smaller and smaller and become bronchioles. So those bronchioles are actually microscopic. You can't see them on a model. And I'm going to show you a microscope slide of that uh, really quick. And then, of course, you've got your right and your left lung on this um, diagram that you need to be able to, to identify. So um, let's look at the alveoli. Here they are. So I have a picture of one, and then we've got a microscope slide. And so uh, here is a bronchial right here. This bronchial is coming down. And then the bronchial terminates into these little clusters that kind of look like grapes. These clustery grape looking structures are your alveoli. This is where the gas exchange occurs. So uh, O2 and CO2 are exchanged in your lungs at the alveoli. Uh, on the test, they probably won't have a picture like this on the left. What they'll have is a microscope slide. So if you look at this, the tube is your brachial, uh, I'm sorry, your um, bronchial. The tube is the bronchial, and then this little air sac kind of look, looks, looks like a um, uh, little pouch. That is your alveoli. And so all you got to be able to do is recognize the alveoli and the bronchioles, and you're set. Okay, so that takes care of that part of the list. Now we're almost done. It just says we have the uh, diaphragm, external and internal intercostal muscles, and then the pleura. So if we were to find, let's see. Gosh, I don't think I've got a diagram of the, oh, there it is. Wasn't sure I had a diagram of our um, diaphragm. So uh, this going back to this picture, the diaphragm is a muscle that is going to be right under your lungs. It's actually the divider between your thoracic cavity, where your heart and lungs are, and your abdominal cavity, where your digestive and reproductive organs are. So this is the diaphragm. The diaphragm is required for respiration. If your diaphragm isn't working, a person can't survive. Uh, and so we have to be sen uh, sending signals to this diaphragm. It's made up of smooth muscle and you don't control it. It's uh, autonomic control from your brain sending signals to the diaphragm. So if you see a strip of muscle below the lungs, it is your diaphragm. Now I don't have a picture of this, but it's pretty easy. Um, you've got ribs that are coming in front of the lungs, obviously. So I'm gonna kind of hand draw a few ribs in. I know this is, this is pretty fancy stuff here. So let's imagine these are ribs. In between the ribs, you have muscle. And these muscles can contract 
and uh, help compress your rib cage or they can expand your rib cage. So these muscles are called intercostal muscles and they're right in between every rib. In fact, when you go to Rib City and you order ribs, you are eating intercostal muscle. So all this area in between our ribs is filled with intercostal muscles. They're going to contract. We have two pairs of them. We have internal and external uh, intercostal muscles. And you'll see that on your list. Honestly, on the list, you don't have to differentiate for my test. You don't have to differentiate between uh, external and internal. Uh, there are two sets of them because one set is going to compress your uh, rib cage to help you exhale. And then the other pair is going to contract and uh, expand your rib cage so that you can uh, inhale. Um, but these, these uh, intercostals are going to aid in respiration. So your rib, your rib cage is helping with respiration. If someone has an injury where they have broken ribs or they have crushed part of their rib cage, they're going to have a hard time breathing because the rib cage is acting like a um, semi, uh, semi rigid chamber that helps draw air in and out of your lungs. So you're not going to be breathing very well if you've got broken ribs and a crushed rib cage. So those intercostal muscles. And then finally, the last thing I want to mention is you have a bag around your lungs like you have a bag around your heart. So remember, the bag around your heart is called the pericardium. Well, the bag around your lungs is called the pleura. And the pleura is going to be having the same structure and function as the bag around your heart, as that pericardium. So your um, pleura is made up of two parts. It's made up of an inner part called the visceral pleura. And then it's got an outer membrane called the parietal uh, um, um, yeah, the uh, parietal pleura. And then in between is fluid. Now, your lungs are always moving as you breathe, just like your heart. So these two layers are going to be moving against each other, against that fluid. And it's going to allow your lungs to move. So the pleura is just a bag around your lungs. And it's made up of two membranes. The one up against the lungs is called the visceral pleura. The one on the outside is the parietal pleura. In between is a fluid we call serous fluid, just like uh, your heart. And that acts as a lubricant so that when these two membranes are moving against each other, they don't cause friction. So uh, this is collectively called your pleura. So your heart bag is called the pericardium. Your lung bag is called the pleura. And then just to throw it in there, uh, I don't think it's actually on the, on the list for any one of these tests, but you also have bag, a bag around all of your abdominal organs. So your stomach, your liver, your reproductive organs, um, they all have a bag around them too, and that's called the peritoneum. You may have heard of peritonitis Peritonitis is when that bag around your abdominal organs is infected or inflamed. Um, so we can have the same thing happen with, with this lung bag. You can have a problem called pleuritis. Pleuritis is an inflammation of this pleura. And the heart has the same thing, pericarditis, uh, if it gets inflamed or infected. All three of these are very serious, potentially life-threatening problems. Um, so we don't want to get infections within our um, serous membranes, these membranes that wrap around these organs. Okay, so I've kind of rambled on a little bit. Uh, some of the stuff I've talked about, I could add for extra credit. So uh, keep that in mind. And... Uh, 
I think this concludes our respiratory video. And uh, don't forget to study the um, uh, heart and your circulation. And I will see you in the next video. Take care.